to the Puck Buddy Podcast. Woo! We are here today with a special episode for you guys. Um, we're gonna special. Yeah, so it's special. Um, this is gonna be focused around the trade deadline. We're gonna talk a little bit of keep trade cut. Uh, you know, just kind of give you a little insight on what moves you should be making around the trade deadline. And what moves you shouldn't be making. Yeah, to prepare you for playoffs. So, where I guess... And, uh, when are playoffs again, guys? Playoffs are coming up in a couple weeks. Um, our fantasy playoffs are week 21, 22, and 23. All right, so guys, keep that in mind. It's it's uh, 19, week 19 now, so two weeks. That's all you got. Yep, it's coming up. And... It. All right, so let me introduce us. Uh, I'm here with uh, Cameron Che. Hello. Eddie Murad, Mal. and myself, Bo <laughs> Hendrickson, and we are going to give you the most awesomest trade deadline <laughs> advice you've ever heard. The besterest. <laughs> yeah, it's that good. Um, well, you know what's not good? What's not good? Well, it's news for the New York Rangers, and I will let Eddie explain a little bit in detail. And I'll explain what I mean by that after. <laughs> All right, well... The New York Rangers are probably, oh. yeah, <laughs> their hockey team, they're probably really sad at this moment, along with the uh, Pittsburgh <laughs> Penguins, Yep, <laughs> because uh, they lost their chance to acquire an elite top four defenseman in Kevin Shattenkirk. Um, Captain Washington Kirk. Capitals were the benefactors in this trade. They were the ones who went out and gave a bunch up for him, but... Honestly, it'll probably be good for them since they have a lot of playoff woes um, that they've been going through in the past couple of years. But we're going to break it down for you. So last night, uh, Shattenkirk was traded to the Washington Capitals along with goaltender Phoenix Capli, which is looks like Coldplay to me, so I just always call him Coldplay, <laughs> um, on Monday evening at a high cost. The Capitals gave up forwards Zach Sanford and Brad Malone, along with a first-round pick in the 2017 draft and a conditional pick as well if Washington advances to the 2017 Eastern Conference Final. And Kirk plays 50% of their playoff games in the first two rounds of the postseason. Uh, The Blues will retain 39% of Shattenkirk's $17 million contract. And... This is really good because Shattenkirk is going onto a team which has 89 points in the East. It's uh, they're 41, 13, and seven, and they're ranked first in the league with a goals against average of 2.10. Uh, the Caps have not advanced past the second round since they made their Cup final appearance in 1998, in which they were swept by the Red Wings. And for fantasy purposes, acquiring uh, Shattenkirk fills the depth needed on defense. For Washington, and it can fill your gap as well. It's going to be a boost to your fantasy team if you have him. Um, the Capitals have struggled mightily in the playoffs, especially to their division rivals, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Since the Pens and uh, Rangers were also looking to acquire Kirk, um, the Capitals have not only boosted their own blue line, but prevented their own rivals from getting um, him on their roster as well. So, all around, good trade. They gave up a lot, but I think it's beneficial for them since they are definitely for sure going to playoffs. And, yeah. you know, they just they need to get past that first and second round for sure. They need to go to the final. And they have it this like this year is looking really sharp for them. So I, it's, it's probably their most sacked team they've had a round of that when he's been there. So, yeah. So uh, we'll see if, like Bo was saying, we'll see if the Ovechkin curse is real because yeah. you know, if they don't go this year, that's going to be. Round two. Thing. They should trade us Ovechkin for like <laughs> Goudreau or something. Barkley Goudreau, worth it. Well, okay, you know when I uh, earlier said that it really hurt the New York Rangers. The reason I mentioned them specifically. So this morning uh, I woke up around probably seven thirty in the morning, right? And I lean over and I hear this weird sound. It to me it sounds like like a it's almost like, like a squeal of a pig mixed with, uh, like, like, like the sound, the essence of all your hopes and dreams just sinking to the bottom of the deepest trench in the ocean. And what it really was, I found out not five minutes later, it was Alain Vignon crying. So <laughs> they're not going to get Shattenkirk. 
Uh, and that was a long way to go for that. But, uh, yeah, it, I was totally expecting the Rangers to get Shad and Kirk. They've been talking about it for weeks now. Uh, and just, whoop, here come the Caps, sweeping out from under them. So, uh, good for the Caps. Hopefully they can get farther in the second round this, this year. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. That, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, everyone really, like, that would have been a really good boost to uh, New York as well. And even like if Pittsburgh got Kevin Shattenkirk, I I think everyone could have just stopped playing right now and just let them have the cup, right? So I'm glad he didn't <laughs> go to the Pittsburgh. Um, but yeah, I could I, I hope I hope the best for the Washington Capitals. I really always, I always root for them. Um, I like Ovechkin. I like Kuznetsov. I like Backstrom. So I mean, it'd be great if they played the pe- the Penguins in the playoffs and knocked them out for us. You know, it'd be sweet. Yeah, and then they beat us in the Cup final. That'd be great. <laughs> you know what? I, that that would be less painful than losing to the Penguins. Again, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. However, I have a quick question for you guys. Uh, how does this affect the St. Louis Blues' chances moving forward? And does it affect big-name players on the Blues' fantasy value? You know, people that have Schwartz, uh, you know, someone that has Steen or, or uh, Tarasenko. Do they take a hit because Shattenkirk's on? Um, uh, I would say definitely on the power play. That's the... Um that's going to be the biggest impact for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Shattenkirk was kind of their quarterback up top, uh, running that power play unit yeah. mm-hmm. along with the other forwards. So I think that's really going to hurt them. Yeah. And I mean, it, whenever you lose your top defenseman, it's it's not going to be a good thing. But at least they were kind of prepared for this. Uh, the Blues all season were trying to shop uh, Shattenkirk, so it's not like it's unexpected. I'm mm-hmm. sure they had a plan in mind, but uh, it's still not going to be a a very beneficial move for them in yeah. terms of uh, their, their future. Like immediate season. Yeah. yeah. It's telling me yeah. that they're expecting to miss playoffs this year or they're not trying to go further than they already are. Um, but talking about the rest of the Blues team, I agree with Bo completely, except I think Tarasenko is pretty much the same. He snipes when he wants to snipe and he scores lots of goals regardless of who's around him. Yeah, um, I, I would say the biggest, the person getting the biggest boost on the um, the Blues. Well, actually, there's two. Pareko. Well, yeah, and it would either be yeah, Pare- yeah, Pareko or Petrangelo. Um, one of them's going to for sure move up to the top line, and I think that'll be Petrangelo. I think they both are just going to move up lines. Yeah, because Pareko will be on the second. Yeah, Petrangelo will take the top. Pareko will take the second. Mm-hmm. It's going to be filling up some roles, and Pareko is their future, so. It's a good move, and I think Pareko will have a breakout year next year, honestly. Yeah. So he's a very talented young defenseman. So they're, they're going to be okay. Um, sucks to lose a big name like that, but so how, that's how hockey goes sometimes. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, let's move uh, right into the segment of uh, keep, trade, and cut. So Ooh, right. players you might want to consider making a move on as the de- trade deadline approaches. Ours has been uh, moved to March 9th. So we got another week and a couple of days before our trade deadline. So this is going to be quite beneficial to people in our league. Um, so hopefully they can listen in and maybe some, like tune into some of the players that they have and make some moves before the deadline. Yeah, And honestly, March 9th makes the most sense if you're trying to set a trade deadline because you want to see all the trades that happen after the NHL trade deadline. You want to kind of evaluate the players at that point that are traded. So in terms of if you want to change your deadline now or in the future, I would say March 9th is probably the most ideal trade deadline for a fantasy league. Mm -hmm. All right. right, So let's let's move right into it, boys. How about it? Let's do it. (laughs) How about it? How about it? All right. So (laughs) I'll start it off. But the guy that we've been talking about a lot, the uh, Andre Copa, not star anymore. Um, he's the center for um, the Kings, and he's 87% owned. Very talented man, um, forward. But let's break this down. He's got 35 points in uh, 55 games this season. Um, only six goals, but he's on pace to hit the 48-point mark. And he's only hit below 60 points once in his 11 seasons. So it's not looking too hot for him right now. The Kings' offense is bottom third in the league. Uh, his line mates are Dustin Brown <laughs> and Adrian Kempe, or Kemp. I think it's Kempe. I think you're right. Like what? <laughs> who, who are those people? Well, we all know who Dustin Brown is. Uh, but anyway, 
I don't know why they're putting him on line with such crappy line mates. But anyway, um, he retains some value on the top power play with some strong names like Carter Pearson and Dowdy. Statistically, Kopizhar is riding a fine PDO of 98.7. He's really got a perfect 5-on-5 five five shooting percentage of 6.18. That's exactly where you want to be between like mm-hmm. 6 and below 8. And he's got a stellar Corsi of 57.1%. Uh, if you can sell high based on the name alone, I would for sure do it. But you might be stuck with Kopitar for the rest of the season just based on the stats that he's put up thus far. Um, considering he's an elite center who will still get points down the stretch as the Kings push for playoffs, he's someone that I wouldn't feel unhappy keeping on my roster, but definitely a little disappointed for the season. Um, names you could try to shoot for are um, Barkov, a strong Florida team right now, very offensively gifted. Uh, Couture on the Sharks would be a good name. Bergeron, Anisimov, Dubinsky, and maybe Derek Stepan. So... You know, if you can sell his name high, I would do it. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said, Eddie. I think the only thing to keep in mind, uh, which is what you mentioned, that uh, keeping Kopitar off the rest of the season is not the worst thing, as he definitely is still an elite center in the league. Oh, for sure. But uh, if, you know, we ought to remind you, as we mentioned last podcast, that the Kings acquired Bishop two days ago uh, to kind of back up quick as a just in case Quick does get re injured before the playoffs or in the playoffs. Uh, as well as uh, potentially to have an option for the Las Vegas Knights to pick up from their team. Well, what that says to me for the Kings, picking up Bishop, is that they are definitely trying to make a push for the playoffs. So I expect Kopitar to maybe pick it up just a little bit towards the end of the season because as the leader of this team, he does need to step it up if they are going to make the playoffs. So uh, if you do get stuck with him, don't panic. Uh, I think he will will do fine uh, you know, the rest of the season. Maybe not, like Eddie said, the 60-plus points. Uh, you know that he got earlier, but I think that uh, you know he'll do just fine after the season. Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. All right, uh, so that's Kopitar. We were kind of saying trade him uh, if you can, but it would be at a lower value. But more than likely, you're just going to want to keep him the rest of the season. So that's how what we think about him. And the next guy we have up is another center, um, and that's Jonathan Taze. So he's actually been one of the hottest players since the start of 2017. Um, his and within the last month uh, of February and a little bit into January, he had, he's had six or seven goals, eleven assists, a plus eight. He's got six power play points, 34 shots, and that's actually good enough for uh, the number three ranked fantasy player of the month. Mm-hmm. So that's well, that's pretty good for Jonathan Taze after having a slower start to the season. Uh, compared to, to put it lightly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, then he usually does, but um, you know, so he's picking it up. He's definitely some guy that, uh, since he's playing so hot, you would sell him high because he's been playing so well. Um, and that kind of you know, kind of raises it raises his fantasy value because he's been playing so well. But also, it's his name. Uh, Jonathan Taze is a very respectable name in the NHL. Uh, everyone sees him as one of the great leaders, one of the great captains, but that doesn't always reflect into fantasy hockey. So people will be like, oh yeah, Taze, he's like an all-star. He's always making you know the all-star league and playing really well, winning cups. But that's just the name associated to it. His stats overall, like he'll definitely be within the one of the top 50, their top 75, if not even lower. But he, it's usually his peripheral stats that bring him down a little bit. Um, I mean, just in general, the Chicago Blackhawks aren't as deep as previous seasons. Uh, he's actually currently centering two rookies with uh, Richard Panic and Nick Schmaltz. So when your line mates aren't super stellar, then that kind of brings you down a little bit as well. So, I mean, at this point, like I said, he's playing really well. His value is really high, so I would trade him if I could. Um, if you could get a... a Another big value name from him that's actually a, a fantasy producer, um, like maybe like a Nicholas Backstrom or maybe a Jeff Carter, or if you can really sell him high, maybe a John Tavares. Uh, those are some some really good centers that I would much rather have over Tays. Um, but if you can't trade him for such a high value, I'm totally fine keeping it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree too. All right. Yeah. I, I think just one little thing I want to um, mention that. 
a big thing when you're trying to do trades is there's a little box at the bottom where you can do a comment and kind of explain why you're trading a player at the time you're trading him. And I think a big thing to say is exactly what Bo said, that he was ranked uh, third of the month, third fantasy player of this past month. So if you are, can sell him really high for like John Tavares saying that to, uh, Taves is super hot right now, uh, like Hansel, but for real, uh, I think that uh, you know you may be able to get away with it. So give it a shot. Yeah, sounds good. I totally agree. Um, but let's move on to the next one. I don't know if you've heard. You might have heard. I think I heard in the last podcast. <laughs> yeah, the last podcast, you might have heard what the word might be. And it's... <laughs> okay, we're stopping there. <laughs> so moving on, we got Henrik Zetterberg. Uh, he's been in the league a long time. He's a reliable offensive producer. Uh, currently he's centering and left winging. And he's 73% owned. He's playing extremely hot with 15 points in his last 14 games, 5 points in his last 3. He's been playing with the young talent, Anthony Mantha, and the antagonist of every dentist, Thomas Tooth Tatar. <laughs> he's been hitting a .77 point per game mark on the season and has on pace for 60 plus points. And that's going to be the first time he's hit that since uh, his 2014-15 season. So Zeddy's playing really well right now. Uh, the bad news is Detroit sits in last place in the East and has a 1% chance of even making playoffs, if that. Um, they have a negative or minus 28 goal differential. They're 26th in goals per game, 25th in goals against average, and dead last in power play efficiency. At this point, since he's playing so well on a team that's doing so bad, you should definitely sell high right now. Try to acquire someone who can get more categories filled and will be on a playoff contending teams. Um, one other name might be like Nick Foligno. I know he's you know on the Columbus he gets he fills all the categories and maybe some of the other names we've mentioned so far. But sell, 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 sell Heinrich Zetterberg. The bird is the berg is the word right now, but it won't be in the future. So that's my advice on that. How do you feel about trading for someone like Patrick Marlowe for Zetterberg? Uh, I would do it since Marlo's playing hot as well, and the Sharks will definitely need, probably keep him hot down the stretch. Yeah. And he's on a better team. So. Yeah, because yeah, I'm just trying to think of someone who replaces the exact same position, center and left wing, and I know Marlo is both. Yeah, so I would and totally I don't know agree. if Felino is both, but Felino's left and right. Left and right. Left and right. Okay, because I just if you needed a center as well, Marlo might be someone you want to try because yeah. he is still pretty pretty hot right now, and um, so are the Sharks. So. Yes, yes. No. Small, small, small little input, but he's my favorite player. So. No, great get, name. Get Marlo. Get Marlo. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of people, I mean, Zetterberg has been known. He's been on the Red Wings a long time. They're a very tenured team. Um, I think you could get him for Marlo, and that would be a solid trade. I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, he's definitely another player that has the name. Yeah. Uh, Zetterberg has been in the league for a while and has been there as an elite player, so a lot of people know him as the captain of the Detroit Red Wings. Right. And the Red Wings are an established franchise, so uh, his name will definitely be well-known and heard around all fantasy leagues. So yep. sell it on that if you can't sell it on uh, his actual good stats so far this season. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, so let's move on to our next Keep Trade Cut player. Uh, this Kung Fu master <laughs> has been uh, doing exactly that, kicking butt as of recently. What? And that is uh, Andersley, son of Bruce. <laughs> uh, he's been making those exact noises as he plays along Tavares <laughs> and Bailey. <laughs> And uh, they're actually, that line is the sole reason why the Islanders are in, currently fighting for a playoff spot, uh, along with some help from Thomas Grice. Oh, yeah. Um, but the best thing about uh, Mr. Lee is that he is your typical stat stuffer. Uh, he will get you stat or good stats in every single category, whether it be goals, assists, he'll get you penalty minutes, he was on the power play unit. Uh, and he he will definitely rack up the shots and the hits, which are great. He's definitely a one-to-one -one ratio of shots and hits, which is something you want with any fantasy player. Mm -hmm. um, but the craziest thing with Anders Lee is you might not even have to worry about keep trade or cutting him because he is only 
two percent owned. Yeah, he's still on the wire so a lot. He could be. Yeah, uh, check your wire, and you might not even have to listen to whatever I'm about to tell you. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, he's been playing really well the last month. Uh, he's had six goals, six assists, uh, twelve penalty minutes, five power play points. 28 shots and 27 hits, so that's a one-to-one shot-to-hit ratio right there. And that ranks him as number 15 fantasy player of the month. So Mm -hmm. that's pretty good for someone that you can just scoop off the wire. So with him, I would say if you have him and people notice that he's, you know, playing this well this month, similar to to Jonathan Tays, then I would trade him as high as you could. Um, you know, maybe for like, uh, if you can get him for like a really high value, you could trade him for a Philip Forsberg. Uh, if you want to go even higher, maybe an our team Panarin, uh, or maybe a Patrick Line. but those are some bigger names that I would definitely trade him for. But if, you know, if, since we were saying he's only 42% owned, you might be able to buy him low as well. It's kind of showing that his name is not that big of a name. So if you can get him for the cheaps, I would definitely invest in uh, Anders Lee. Yeah, good name not to put out there. Definitely a surprise for me this year. Surprise for everyone, probably. Yeah, he's actually uh, only five points away from his career high, so he's definitely having a career season. Oh, he'll get he'll get that for sure. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to move on to another guy who's having a career season. Uh, moving on to Ehlers and Escalators. Ehlers <laughs> favorite board game. Ehlers. <laughs> All right. So Nikolai Ehlers, left wing, right wing, eligible, 74% owned. Uh, he's had 48 points this season and is on pace to hit 62. He went pointless for eight straight games before finally scoring a goal on February 21st. So that was pretty recently. Uh, that was the biggest drought of his, the season so far. But he's been stellar all season, playing on a line with Patrick Laine and Mark Shifley as he accumulated 17 points at even strength in the first half. But since being switched to a line with Brian Little and Laine, production has been a little slower as he only has two points at even strength. Um, I do not expect this slump to continue as he's been rolling with a sound PDO of straight 100 and a Corsi 4 of 52.2%. And he's been one of the most consistent forwards on the Jets this season. Uh, The Jets are 10th in goals per game, which is very good. Depending on the situation you might be in, I'm going to tell you different things and different ways to handle this player. If you're locked into a playoff spot right now, I would sell, sell, sell Nikolai Ehlers. He has a fairly tough rest of season schedule, and the Jets have minimal games in the final weeks of the playoffs. They only have two games in the final week of playoffs, so that's not going to win you that um, game. The, the championship if it comes to that. And so I would say sell him if you are locked in already. Um, if you're on the cusp of a wild card spot and are fighting to get in, Ehlers might help you in that aspect. Because of his recent slump, he's certainly a buy low candidate and will bring some value as he's playing with one of the most talented rookies in the league this season and is a strong asset in himself. So I think depending on the situation you're in for your team, you might want to buy or sell. In my case, I'm locked into playoffs, so I'm trying to sell him. I'm sending all sorts of offers out. Um, but he's a good player to have regardless, so I wouldn't be too upset either if you are going to keep him. or have. I wouldn't be team. upset either if you had to keep Ehlers. Now, yes. really quick, uh, I actually just looked up the uh, Winnipeg Jets line combinations, and I don't know if they switched it around – uh, in the past, like, 48 hours or not. But they actually just put Ehlers on the top line again with Brian Little and Blake Wheeler. So I don't oh. know if that's going to be a, a good line or not. Uh, I mean, obviously, on paper, that's amazing uh, with the speed they have there. But we'll see how yeah, so that's a new Ehlers does with Wheeler it. as opposed to Lyonet. So uh, he, he's still on the top power play unit, but um, I'm, I'm curious to see how he does. Yeah, well, those are both great names, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, that'll help. Uh one thing I want to re-highlight that Eddie mentioned before is uh, the Winnipeg Jets' uh, playoff schedule is not as favorable, uh, especially those only two games during the, the championship is something huge that if you have aspirations of making it that far, um, you're not going to really want all these Jets players in your lineup. So not only uh, Ehlers, but uh, I would say most other Jets are definitely a sell for me. Mm-hmm. Um even like Patrick Laine, who's having a stellar season, like if you can uh, 
so high sell on him. really high on him for the way he's playing, which has been outstanding. I would, uh, you know, much rather have some uh, top tier uh, all stars uh, that will actually be, you know, playing during my championship game than a uh, uh, rookie uh, phenom Patrick Laine. Yeah, that's a very good point. All right, well, let's see here. I think we got we got one more right here. Let's go to uh, Claude Giroux. And he's uh, a guy that everyone knows his name. He's 98% owned, very, very highly owned. Uh, he's doing everything right statistically. He's one of the elites. There's no doubt about it. But this year he's been quietly slumping with only 43 points in 61 games. He's only on pace for 58 points, which is his lowest total since the 2012-13 season. Uh, the Flyers have not been too good in the second half. Their goals per game is 21st in the league. Goals against average is 26. Save percentage is 29th. Many Flyers have suffered as a result, such as Ghost Bear, Mason, Neuvert, and Drew himself. Drew has also been steadily declining throughout the whole season. December was his best month, best month but he's slowly been dropping from a point-per-game pace to a .7 point-per-game pace. Uh, the Flyers have a 5.16 chance of making playoffs, so that's looking very unlikely. So for me, Drew is a sell high, sell high, sell high. If you can get an elite name like Kuznetsov, Tavares, maybe even Pavelski or Sagan or Ryan Johansson even, I would sell Drew for any of those names. And you should be able to get good value from him because he's such a such a strong uh, player and such a you know famous name. Yeah, well, there's a good chance he's your first round pick too. And usually with your first round pick, you can demand a little more. Even if the season goes on, just kind of let him know, you know, like he's my first round pick. I want to get that value, even if he's not playing at that value, because you know he's completely capable of playing oh, yeah. at that that high tier. So De- I would agree with that. Sell him, but sell him high, very high. All right, so that's my thoughts on Giroux. This uh, for the keep trade cut section. Now I'm going to move on to another guy who's having a stellar, stellar year. Uh, Mikhail Granlund. Uh, this guy, oh man, he has been incredible this season. Uh, he can fit any of your positions with center, left wing, and right wing eligibility. He's 83% owned. Probably should be much higher than that. He should be 100% owned. Yeah. But um, so, just look. Uh, just like all the Minnesota Wild players, Granlund is playing with fire. His advanced stats indicate that he's been sweltering as his PDO is at a 106.8. His shooting percentage is an outrageous 14.7. And his Corsi <laughs> 4 is a 48.5. So just looking at that, you can tell how crazy the Minnesota, like how he's doing and how Minnesota is just, just riding with fire. They're just scoring, not even holding the stats to do it. But it's, it's looking good. They're, they're doing it all season. So normally... If you play um, sorry, with... can I interrupt really quick just to uh, help the listeners understand exactly what we're talking about again? We do this usually every episode, but just to remind everybody what Eddie means by PDO at 106.8 is a combination of shooting percentage, even strength, as well as even strength save percentage while that player is on the ice. So the fact that it's so high, usually we that, that why we say, oh, it's attributed to good luck because A, that means that the puck's going in for you. And while you're on the ice, your goalie is making awesome saves at, at even strength. The shorthand or the shooting percentage, obviously, 14.7 is so high, but like Eddie said, that's been continuing. And then the core C4 is how often, when you're on the ice, your team is controlling the puck. So only going to 48.5, not even to 50%, is amazing with the other stats that Eddie just said. So sorry, Eddie, continue. Just wanted to clarify a little bit. Yeah, okay. so yeah, that's the breakdown of those stats. Thank you there. Um, so normally if you're playing with like fire like that, you're going to get burned. But Mikhail says, nay, he has <laughs> a firebender. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely a firebender. Uh, he has seven points in his last six games and 55 in 60 games, almost hitting the point per game mark. He's already far surpassed his previous record of 44 points in 82 games. Considering all the games Ooh. in the NHL, he's been on the number one line all season. Normally, this kind of production only lasts in spurts throughout the season, but amazingly, he only he only continues to improve as the season progresses. The correlation from the beginning of the year to now is practically linear, as he has steadily moved from a .2 per game pace at the beginning all the way to a one point per game pace, approximately. 
Um, unfortunately, his goals per game, power play points per game have all flat lines from October to February. So that's kind of stinky. But it's encouraging to see uh, a constant flow of points throughout. Um, they have been one of the toughest. They have one of um, the Minnesota Wild have one of the toughest schedules down the stretch, but it hasn't stopped them all season. They also have the second most games during the fantasy playoffs, which will help your team tremendously. In this particular situation, you have to keep the hot players with the strongest chemistry. Koivu, Niederreiter, and Granlund, of course. Um, sometimes Niederreiter is taken off that line for Zucker, and but Koivu and Granlund usually play together. It's been really awesome what they've been able to do. Uh, the Wild will definitely make playoffs, and they will need to rely on their hottest line to take them far. So, I just say keep Granlund. Don't trade him. You can trade for him do it but i don't think someone's gonna want to give him up that easily especially for his value right now so you're just kind of stuck with what you got and that's a good thing if you have him which i do so it's been now, real, yeah been pretty amazing seeing all the, like look doing all the research for the stats like minnesota has been crazy crazy and just to like say it here first judging by all the stats that i've been seeing for them they've been playing out of their mind it's not only Granlin that's had a crazy high PDO and high shooting percentage and low Corsi, but it's the whole Minnesota team. So um, if they get into playoffs and they fall on their face right in the first round, I'm not going to be surprised, to be honest with you. But that has nothing to do with fantasy playoffs. So, But it has everything to do with the Blackhawks. <laughs> the <laughs> the no, Wicked actually, Witch. The <laughs> Wicked Witch of the West. It's funny you said that, Eddie, because uh, I was reading two different articles this morning by two separate analysts. Mm -hmm. One was one of the Minnesota Wild uh, crew with their normal, uh, you know, staff when they're they're on the games. And another one was from, I believe, New York Times was picking up on the NHL situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they were talking uh, about the Minnesota Wild in the exact situation, saying that they believe that they're going to choke in the first round, that that none of them would be surprised because of all their numbers, like you just explained. Like, they were using the exact same numbers Nice. Uh, especially the PDO ones, and it was really funny uh, that you said pretty much exactly what they did. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah, you can see where that's coming from. Then uh, I'm Mr. their inside Rock. source. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it was Eddie that they gave me like, Okay, all right, I see, I see. <laughs> now, one follow-up question, Eddie. Mm-hmm. What would make you actually trade Granlin? What player could convince you if you had Granlin right now? Like, is there one? Yeah, it'd have to be an elite player on an elite team right now. Um, the problem is a lot of the elite players are fixed in their positions. So, like, there's either straight centers or straight left wings. If you look at, like, Wayne Simmons, he's a straight right, right wing. If you mm-hmm. look at mm-hmm. Evgeny Kuznetsov or Backstrom, straight centers. Ovechkin, right wing. Um, Joe Thornton, center. So, Crosby Center, yeah. Crosby Center, Malkin Center. Yeah, all these guys are fixed in their positions. Granlin has so much flexibility, so it's hard to give him up um, for anything, really. So, And does, I picked him he up play off the waiver wire. Does he play so all, all three my... positions? What? Does he play all three positions? Yeah. Forward? Oh, man. He just doesn't play defense and goalie, which I wouldn't be he probably could. added <laughs> that on, too. He plays center, left wing, and right wing. So, and I... You know, you're going to have your elite players. People didn't draft Granlin very high, you know. So for his value, I think you just got to keep him. If you can, like I said, get an elite player, do it. Like if you can get a Tarasenko or if you can get someone that's going to give you the yeah. for sure points, like do it. If he's a top first, second rounder, do it. But if not, just keep Granlin. You, if you have him right now, you should be riding high with him and enjoying it. Sitting back and laughing, your <laughs> enjoying ass. the ride. Yes. So yeah, like you. Like, from to answer your question, no, there's very few players I will trade Granlin for unless they're elite. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Which probably wouldn't happen anyway. So yeah, exactly. Right. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and I like that flexibility. You know me. I'm loving those players that can do uh, multiple positions. Oh, yeah. so. I know you're. I'm, I'm on the Granlin train right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. All right. Well, uh, if it's okay, do you guys, uh, if I move on to someone that I. Uh, have a little bit of connection to because he used to be on my team. Yeah, can you but, take over here? Uh, I think I can. Oh, very uh, cool. This, would, <laughs> this guy <Very> really <laughs> needs no introduction. Evander Kane from the Sabres, he is having an absolute breakout year offensively. I think in the past he struggled with a little bit of discipline, backchecking, that kind of thing, but it's all kind of coming together this season with Eichel and Ryan Hart and everything on the team. So for me, I immediately am saying this is not a cut. 
But is he a smart trade or is he a smart keep? On the season, Kane has 21 goals, 11 assists, 81 penalty minutes, 6 power play points, 170 shots on goal, and 86 hits. And here's an interesting tidbit. Of Kane's 21 goals, 20 of them are at even strength. Wow. Now, that obviously shows his skill as a player, but does that lack of power play scoring hurt you in the playoffs? His PDO at even strength right now is at 97.9, while his last four-year average is 99.7. To me, looking back at the past couple of seasons that he's played, he has not had the best goaltending. This year, it seems a little bit of the same. Leonard's been decent, but I believe that 97.9 is due to the goalies allowing even strength goals when he's on the ice. Having said that, his Corsi board percentage is only at 47% on the season, so when he is on the ice, most of the time the other team controls the puck, or I guess more often than not, I should say. So basically, I'm going to come all the way back around to is he a smart trade? There are some other players that I was thinking of that possibly we can own instead. For instance, Goudreau from the Flames, Wheeler from the Jets, or Saad from the Blue Jackets. Let's look at Goudreau specifically. Uh, Johnny Hockey has 13 goals, 30 assists, 12 power play points, and 143 shots on goal, which in my mind comes down to a team-by-team basis, basically, of who you want to have over the other. Kane has more goals, penalty minutes, and hits, while Goudreau has many more power play points and assists. So, for me, you got to look at your team, see what you need to get in the playoffs. If you're a lock, you may want to trade trade high he's just a left wing position as you know i like those multi-position uh players uh but if you are fighting for a playoff spot and you need someone to boost a couple of your peripheral staff while still putting up goals he is not a bad decision once again 81 penalty minutes 170 shots and 86 hits so far in the season what do you guys think uh yeah i like him stat stuffer for sure yeah he's definitely a stat stuffer uh what you were saying about uh his power play ability definitely intrigued me. Um, so I kind of looked back at his history, and he hasn't recorded over 10 power play points in it, in any season. He has so, six right now, so he's, he's right on track, basically. Yeah, so. so this is a, a usual thing of him. Uh, you don't really need to expect too many power play points. That's not something he's known to give you, but you can expect all the hits, um, all the penalty minutes, and definitely the shots. Um, mm, oh yeah, he has a career high of 287 shots. Wow, that's ridiculous. That's getting up there with <laughs> Ovechkin and you know like Brett Burns. So if someone's shooting the puck that much, even like last season, he had 271 shots, and he's on pace for that, if not even more. Um, so I, I, yeah, I think that's unreal. Um, he actually, oh, I'm looking at this right now. In 65 games, he had 270 shots. That's what? ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I don't know. For me, I love the stat stuffers. I love players that can get you every other category. So, I'd be fine keeping him. But like you you were saying, if you can get that elite player, then he's totally worth the trade. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, let me move on to uh, another player real quick. Somebody that we at the uh, Puck Buddy Podcast certainly love because he is a Sharks player. However, go Sharks! <laughs> Sharks! Uh, I'll go really quick, really quick with him. It's Joe Thornton. Yes. And we all know who Joe is. On the season, he has five goals, and only two of them are against goalies. That means three were empty nets. His first three, by the way, were empty nets. Then he has 34 assists. That's not bad for an average player, but we know Joe can usually do more. Once again, he's 37 years old, so that's okay. 47 penalty minutes, 15 power play points, 63 shots, and 39 hits. I'm not arguing that Joe is not one of the all-time greats, but he's 80% owned with the stats I just said. My question really is, is he better than someone like Derek Stepan, who's only 52% owned and has 12 goals, 31 assists, 12 penalty minutes, 11 power play points, 153 shots, and 21 hits? What about Anisimov? He's only 63% owned, and he has 22 goals, 21 assists, 30 penalty minutes, 8 power play points, 100 shots and 18 hits. I couldn't believe so, that when I saw that. Right, 63% right. Yeah. owned. I was like, whoa. Now, Joe's PDO at even strength this season is exactly 100, <laughs> which is great. And his Corsi 4 is 53.3, which is actually a little bit lower than he used to, uh, but not bad. Stepan's 
even strength PDO this season is actually at 101.9, which is a little lower than his career average 102.4. Yet, of course, he four is down to 49.6, still around 50, which is great. So, question to you guys really quick. With Joe's unreal own percentage, will, you know, should you sell high, give him the opportunity? I think it's a no-brainer, but what do you guys think? So, I was actually looking into it because I was amazed at the stats you put in. Um, and the only reason I would say you need to keep Joe Thornton is if you look at the rest of your roster, you're not in any deficits in any other categories besides power play points. Mm. Because he's one of the very few, he's a very talented um, center who gets a, always is on the top power play, no matter what. And we know that the Sharks power play has been slumping this year. They're very capable of scoring on the power play, and I think they'll get hot down the stretch. 15 power play points is nothing to shy away from. I think he can definitely win you that category in some weeks when he puts up, you know, five assists on the power play. So we'll see. I definitely agree that you should sell him. Um, That's my main thing. Literally the only time I would keep him is, like I said just now, if you are lacking in power play points. Power play points. That and assists. And assists, yeah. He gets assists. Those are his only, like his main two stats that he gets. So if you need those, then you got to keep him. Otherwise... He's not going to get you that many shots. Uh, obviously, if he's not shooting the puck, he's not going to get you that many goals, especially if there's a goalie in the net. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine with uh, with selling him as well. Yeah, and I guess the last thing uh, about Thornton that I want to bring up a little bit is the potential for a drop. I know that seems weird for dropping Joe Thornton, but if you uh, initially try and get a trade for him, right, and you no longer need the, the stats that he brings, which are primarily what we just talked about, power play points and assists, if you no longer need those and you need someone who can be a stat sufferer for peripherals, if you can't get a trade for Joe Thornton on his name alone, which would surprise us a lot, we believe that you could definitely get a positive trade for him. But if you can't, and for instance, you already have another shark like Marlo uh, or Couture, uh, Burns, you know, luckily for you, Eddie. Uh, but if you have someone like that on your team and you don't need another power play shark, uh, I would be comfortable dropping him for a Nisi Mov, possibly step on, depending on, you know, the weekly matchups and you going into playoffs. So for me, he is the one player so far that I could possibly drop in the perfect scenario. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd have to be perfect for sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, another player I think. That- yeah, that, that does it for Thornton, Eddie, if you want to move on to uh, <laughs> my favorite cereal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll move on to your favorite cereal, Cam. Okay. Uh, if you, hopefully you brought your milk, because we're going Tyson Berry Crunch on those fools. Woo! Yeah. Tyson Berry Crunch! Yay! <laughs> He's only 60% owned, defenseman, of course. Um, but he has 26 points in 52 games. Uh, he's at a half point per game pace right now. He's on pace to hit his lowest point total since his 2012-13 season, which was four years ago. And he's still shooting at a 6.43 five-on-five shooting percentage, so that's actually really good. He has 133 shots on the season. Not bad at all. Uh, His point production has ebbed and flowed throughout the season, though. As uh, the first quarter, he had a .45 point per game pace. In the second quarter, he had a .6 point per game pace. And then in the third, he went all the way back down to a point four two point per game pace. So up and down, up and down we go. Uh, following this pattern, it may indicate that Barry's in for quite a more productive last quarter of the season. Might go right back up, and I actually think it will. He's offensively gifted on an offensively stunted team. But there are rumors, actually, about a trade that might go through where he might go to the Oilers, because I know they were looking to get Shattenkirk too. They're still in need of one of those top defensemen on the blue line to help McDavid. So if that happened, his value would fire up exponentially. For now, if you have him, you're probably stuck with him because of the barren defensive wasteland that is the waiver wire. So (laughs) if you can sell him on the promise of a better tomorrow, I would do it. You know, like you said in the description, if you want to, you know, put his stats in there, say that there are trade rumors going around, maybe see if you can sell him a little bit. I would do it. You don't want to, I would not want the risk of a defenseman on the worst team in the league, even if at his talent level, if I can acquire a better defenseman on a different team. Um, But it is very tantalizing with that rumor going to the Oilers, but you never know, you know, you can't, we thought Shattenkirk was going to go, I thought he was going to Tampa for the longest time, but that obviously didn't pan out. And, you know, the Rangers thought he was going to them 
and they end up crying over it. <laughs> so, other players I would look at, though, who I would take, lesser name, Jared Spurgeon. On a hot, wild team, I would take him over Barry. Nick Letty, not known to be a point producer, but he's been doing it in the, on the Islanders. He's on the top power play, and he's been doing well. Seth Jones on the second power play unit, doing well in Columbus. And Alex Petrangelo. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them, but he's going up into the rankings, going on that top power play with Shattenkirk gone, so you can maybe steal him. <laughs> so those are some names I would look into for Barry. Okay. Um, the soggy cereal at this point. So I, I want to ask a question for a, for a friend. Sure. Over here. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so my friend. For a friend. Uh, he's been holding uh, Tyson Barry. Uh, for for a little bit, uh, when Tyson Berry was on the IR, he, he held him there for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, he came back, and then he wasn't sure if he wanted to play him again, so he's still kind of holding on to him on that I, IR spot. Didn't even touch him, you know. He didn't wasn't playing that well, and now he like scored a goal here and there. But so pretty much, uh, my friend can't really drop any other players, mm-hmm. but has that IR spot full of a healthy Tyson Berry. <laughs> uh, would you recommend dropping him if, say, you needed to make room in the IR spot? Or do you need if that if your friend we'll just call him Ob. Ob. Yeah. Um, if your friend Ob. It's pronounced uh, Obo. <laughs> Obo. 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 Um, if if your friend has a need for someone stronger than Barry to put in the IR spot, I would drop Barry. Um. That just depends who that player is. If they're on IR and it's like a strong elite player, you can for sure drop Tyson Berry. If um, if you don't have anyone, he's just stuck on your IR and you want to get him back on your roster, I would wait until he gets hot and maybe drop a lesser player or just keep him on your IR because, like I said, the, wa- the waiver wire has no defenseman. So he has value being the top defenseman on a team regardless of that team. Um, also the fact that he might get traded is a, whether it's the Oilers or anywhere else, the Colorado avalanche want to sell players, keep him until the trade deadline's over. That's my recommendation. And then just see how he does from there. If he starts heating up, maybe take him off. If he gets traded, take him off. If he doesn't and nothing happens, drop him after maybe a couple days after the trade deadline. That's that's my recommendation. Uh, it's a very team based. So hopefully you can give a good advice to your friend there. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll I mean, let uh, Obo know that uh, <laughs> you hold on to Tyson Berry Crunch for a little longer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a question for for your uh, for your Obo friend over there yeah. would be: How many defensemen does Obo have at the moment? Uh, he currently has five include or five without Tyson Berry. So once Tyson oh. Berry comes off the IR, he will have six. No. I believe that six is too many. So personally, uh, especially in our league where we have uh, four playable slots for defensemen. I believe that you, depending on who your other five are, you may be comfortable dropping him uh, unless he gets super hot in the next, you know, 20 minutes. So yeah, for me, I'm a little more willing to drop him earlier than I think Eddie is, but I think that's just a preference of both of us. I'm kind of a, uh, you know, pull the trigger and ask questions later kind of fantasy player. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a wait, do the research, wait till he's cold, and then just be stuck with him and be sad about it kind of player. So, or even better AKA if he's cold. Yeah. Or I say even better if he's cold. Uh, pick him up, assuming he's going to be very hot. Yeah, and then, then he drop your cold. best player. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's what I did for Niederreiter, and it worked. To each their own. Yeah, sometimes it works. Sometimes you strike gold. Sometimes you get soggy. Sometimes cereal. you get goth despair. Get Goss despaired. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Goss despair. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move right into him. Do you mind him. if I uh, start it off a little bit and then yeah, I'll hand it off it. to you? Yeah, go for it, please. Ba- I just wanted to, to start off with, uh, we're talking about Shane Goss despair, by the way, guys, of the Philadelphia Flyers, a defenseman, in case you guys didn't know, because, uh, you know, you were looking and you're like, hey, wait a minute, he's not dressed, he must be injured. He wasn't. <laughs> uh, he was just scratched, a healthy scratch. Well, when his biggest headline in weeks reads, Shane Goss despair finally scores, I feel it's safe to assume that almost everyone is aware of the uninspiring sophomore slump the kid is going through. Yeah. So my question, a couple questions actually, would you be able to trade him at this point? And if you can't, do you hold or keep him? Other possible players that we have discussed a little bit, Pareko, Truba, Giordano, 
Sammy Botnan even, who was back for the Ducks. Although he has been a healthy scratch, like I mentioned, the Ghost has five goals, 21 assists, 26 penalty minutes, 17 power play points, 134 shots on goal, and 25 hits on the season. However, he's also minus 24. His even strength PDO is down at 94.8. However, I kind of attribute both of that to his scoring woes, as well as Philly's terrible goaltending, which Eddie mentioned you know, earlier, much earlier on in our podcast, uh, how bad that tandem has been over there. So uh, his Corsi 4 percentage is an impressive 54.6, which is really good. That means that more often than not, when he's on the ice, his team does have possession of the puck. And 70.3% of the faceoffs that occur when he is on the ice happen in the offensive zone, which is a giant number, 70% meaning the coach is putting him out there when they you know, have an opportunity to score. So still believe that he can score. They have just an 11% chance of making the playoffs. So, question to you, and I'm going to uh, push it on to Eddie now. You know, Do you keep the ghost? Do you trade him if possible? Uh, or do you drop him for somebody else? Eddie, uh, take it away. Okay, so I really liked all the stats you put forward there. Uh, we know the upside of Goss is spare as he was a, pretty much a 50-point defenseman last year and his Uh, freshman year Um, but sophomore slumps they really do hit you hard and we're seeing it now like you were saying Um, his point production has steadily decreased from a 0.5 point per game pace to a 0.4 point per game pace Um, recently though the month of february he's been seeing an uptick in points he finally got all the way back to the half point per game pace that he started the year off with so that's nice to see Um, some interesting stats to go along with so keep in mind, Ghost Despair's stats were very good. How you were mentioning, he has a good Corsi. They start in the offensive zone a lot because they're right, they right. believe in him. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you some uh, stats about the Flyers in general. <laughs> they are 21st in the league for goals per game. They're 26th in the league for goals against average per game. They're 29th in the league for save percentage, uh, team save percentage. They're 28th in the league for team shot percentage. 29th in the league for goals four percentage and dead last for team PDO. Oh no. So considering all that, <laughs> Goss's Bear has actually been doing very well, which is why I don't understand why he's been scratched so much. Um, but I digress. <laughs> we, we can't we can say, don't blame Ghost. Don't put it on Ghost. Ghost is still good till our butts fall off because we pretty much talk out our ass. But that's not going to help you in fantasy. If you can sell Ghost on his name and on his upside and on the power play, um, since he's on the power play, I would certainly try to. Other names you could acquire, maybe Oscar Clefbaum, uh, Aaron Ekblad, you were saying Colton Pareko, maybe Cam Fowler, Giordano, Ryan Ellis, and Andre Markov. I'd rather have all those names over um, Mr. Shane Ghost's bear. Maybe next season will be his year, but I agree with you, Cam, pretty much just that, you know, what are you going to do? So, so basically, you're saying uh, kind of like if you could trade for any of those names you mentioned, you know, definitely go for it. But if not, you know, like you mentioned to Bo, how there's no defenseman on the waiver wire, you just kind of forced to keep him at this point if if you can't get a trade. Yeah, his upside is is good, and okay, he'll, he'll get. I mean, like you said, they're starting him in 71 percent of all offensive zone faceoffs. Just yeah, just under 71. That's that's incredible. That's a really good. That's some great upside. He gets power play points. He's on the top power play. So and he shoots the puck a lot. You were saying some great possession stats that he has. Yeah. So you know it's just bad times for the Philadelphia Flyers. It's bad times for Gosses Bear and the you know coach uh, Dave Haxall just for some reason loves to put the blame on someone else and puts it on the ghost. So it's, it's unfortunate. But better to put it on someone that's not there. I know the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> someone who's there at all. Yep. Um, so. But I actually have oh, a follow up oh, oh. question for both of you. Okay. Um. So, as we mentioned, Goss Despair is a key possible drop. Tyson Berry is a key possible drop. Mm-hmm. Who would you rather have between those two players? Goss Despair. Goss Despair, 100%. Yep. 100%? Okay. 100%. Duly noted. And unless, I think, unless Berry gets traded. <laughs> yeah. It's still if, the possibility, but... If he uh, goes to the Oilers, then that answer flips immediately. Yeah. Uh, or, I mean, probably pretty much any other team. Yeah. Uh, however... I think that Gostas Bear may have, not anymore, but had some of the best flow in the NHL. Ah, uh, yes. 
flow so is important. for me, if he can get that flow back, maybe it'll just even him out a little bit, and he'll get some more goals. But I don't know. <laughs> Growing your hair takes a lot of time. So well, I, I agree with Eddie. I got to spare, and last spare gets traded. Yep. All right. Fair assessment. And that does it for Ghost. So I think we'll move into our last defenseman now that we're going to talk about, who is in a very different position than Goss is there, and that would be P.K. Subban. Now, if you guys all remember, let's go back to the summer, that huge blockbuster trade, P.K. Subban for Shea Weber, one for one. Everyone's like, what is going on here? Uh, you know, the Canadians, I felt, were getting the raw end of the deal a little bit from how P.K. Subban was. Well, Shea Weber has, was actually, you know, lighting it up in the beginning of the year and still has been doing very well. P.K. Subban was Cold, 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 so cold, ice cold. Right. So, <laughs> right. I was wondering, you know, if you have PK at this point in time, or you're, you know, you have an eye on a fifth defenseman or, you know, an additional defenseman, is PK Subban someone to target or someone to try and trade away before playoffs begin? Let's just take a look quickly at his season stats so far. In just 46 games played, he has eight goals, 22 assists. 30 points total with 42 penalty minutes, three power play goals that give him 12 power play points total, and 115 shots on the season. Now, if we look at his last five games, he has definitely been picking it up. Let's see, he has six assists and one goal in his past five games with a plus five rating. Mm. And one, two, three, four, five, six shots. So uh, he's been averaging about 24 plus change minutes uh, per, per game as well. So PK has uh, been picking it up, in my opinion. His PDO, which to remind you guys again, is our luck factor. Half of it is the shooting percentage, half of it is the save percentage while he's on the ice. Uh, right now it's at 97.7. Now, uh, if you guys remember, or if you guys are diligent and listen to our previous podcast, we mentioned how Pecorine was kind of uh, going into a slump, per se, and that's really, really, really nice way to say that he's been sucking. Mm-hmm. So I think that 97.7 PDO for, uh, for PK is a little bit, in fact, due to the poor save percentage that uh, Pecorine has been putting up. Uh, but recently, as, you, as I told you, Piki Subban's stats in the past five games have been pretty stellar, so I imagine that number will go up. His career average is 100.2, so he's definitely below that. I think the rest of the season it will continue to rise. So for me, uh, I would either keep PK if you have him or try and sell for a little bit of a higher defenseman with a better schedule in the actual playoffs for us. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it, uh, but Bo, I don't know if you want to Yeah, I'll, take I'll try him in here. Um... I definitely agree with you on Subban being a, a solid, uh, someone to trade for, someone to uh, get on your roster at this point in the season. Uh, so everyone's kind of riding this fact that he had a sluggish start, but no one's really recognizing how well he's been playing in 2017. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, within the last month, even, it goes to say that he's had a, a goal, just one goal, which is kind of weird, but he's had 11 assists. He's a plus five, uh, 15 penalty minutes, five power play points. And he's got that one-to-one ratio of 21 shots on goal and 20 hits. So those Ooh. those are all the stats you want, um, especially in a defenseman. Also, to add on to that, his uh, shoot his scoring pace was at a .38 before the second half of the season, and now it's at a .7. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's jumped that. humongously. And he's also has 12 points in his last nine games. So yeah. I'd say that trend's going to continue. Yeah, it definitely will be. Uh, he's performing within the top three of um, all defense or fantasy defensemen uh, this last month. So he's looking good, and he's proven that he's completely capable of putting up elite defenseman numbers. Uh, his past three seasons, he's been over 50 points um, in all those seasons, and he's on track to do that again. Uh, he's only 20 points away, but as Eddie was saying, at the pace that he's been playing, uh, it's completely possible because... You know, within uh, his uh, last seven games, or no, last nine games. 12 points. Yeah, he's at 12 points, but he's putting up uh, points in seven of those nine games. So that's kind of showing his consistency. Nice. Um, but the crazy thing that I want to point out is uh, five of those seven games were multi-point games. Ooh. So that's showing that he's putting up, uh, he has four games with uh, two assists, and then a game with the goal and assist. So 
is just kind of showing that he's putting them up in bunches right now. And uh, that's what you're going to want at this point in the season, especially going into playoffs. You want someone who's uh, particularly hot, especially a defenseman, which is harder to come by. Yeah. So if you can buy a P.K. Subban on his first half performance, I think uh, he's totally worth it. Yeah, um, going off of the playoff consideration as well, for your fantasy playoffs, the Predators are great to own because they are th- tied for third amongst most games in your fantasy playoffs with 11 games down the stretch in those three weeks. So definitely, definitely buy, definitely keep. Smart man cam buying PK. I thought that was a great trade you made. Yeah, if you guys don't mind, if we just talk about that really quick to give an example to the to our listeners of, of what the trade kind of looked like. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. Yeah, so I uh, actually was it two days ago that it went through, or was it yesterday? Uh, yesterday, it was and then it should go to, through tomorrow. Tomorrow, so it was two days ago that I actually submitted it first, and then he accepted it. So the trade that I talked about with one of the fellows in, in our league, uh, we kind of went. You know, back and forth, we probably had 10 different options that we kept denying as we came to an agreement, and that's kind of how trading goes sometimes, so don't don't be discouraged if the first attempt, you know, gets get shot down, just try counteroffer and counteroffer and see you guys come to an agreement, uh, you know, as bargaining goes in the real world. Well, let's talk about the players that I picked up. I got P.K. Subban, and I got Daniel Sedin, Okay. Yeah. Then you, know, you, got, you got Heinrich, Heinrich Sedin. Yeah. Henrik Sedin, that's what I meant in the center. Uh, Henrik Daniels the wing. Uh, they He's look the exactly the same. They're both they're both very very pretty women. Um, so uh, <laughs> if you look at what I gave, I gave Evander Kane, who I talked about and you know mentioned that he used to be on my team. Uh, and who was the other guy I gave? Uh, was Nylander. that uh, Saad? Nylander. Or did I Nylander. Give... William Nylander. Nylander. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Which you picked uh, up off the wire. Sorry, so many options. So, P.K. Subban uh, and Henrik Sedin for Evander Kane and William Nylander. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what are your guys' first impressions when I when I showed you guys the trade that I that, that I had been or that had been accepted? Uh, P.K. was a steal. Uh, yeah. The way I saw it is, uh, you, uh, def- I mean, you gave up uh, Evander Kane, who's a quality all around stat player. But mm-hmm. you received a defenseman who was uh, awesome. an elite uh, all-around stat player. So it's like the level that uh, Subban could play at is uh, way above what Evander Kane's already playing at. Yeah, and you right. traded for a player a player who's on a playoff-bound team, or they're fighting for the playoffs, whereas the Buffalo Sabres are all pretty much on the brink of not making it. They're They're trying, but... Yeah, not, not like the Predators, you know. So, and I, I think Eddie, what you said really uh, was uh, the main reason why I was so excited about the trade. Uh, I actually didn't know a couple of the stats that you guys had mentioned at like PKC Bank's point seven per game, uh, you know, point kind of thing. How he's risen—that's awesome. Yeah, it's a huge but, increase. Right, but uh, just to let our listeners know, Eddie and Bo do a lot of uh, stat input uh, to a sheet that they allow me access to, and in this stat. Uh, sheet they have all of the three weeks of playoffs for our fantasy league and how many games each team plays in each of those weeks and when i'm looking at this list i look at the predators and they play like eddie said was it the second or third most games uh they play 11 uh, games yeah they're tied yeah so for me getting a defenseman that actually is going to be my number one defenseman now and i didn't even have to give up a defenseman uh for me was a no-brainer so uh no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I totally thought that was a steal for you. Yeah, great trade. Good trade. Great, great trade. Well, sweet. All right. Well, uh, sorry to take up so much of that time there with that. No, but I'll let you guys move on to uh, our goalies. I thought that was an important one to to mention. So, oh, okay. especially since we had an actual like live example, real life ex- experience. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it just goes to show how we think it through, how we go about trading and. How we value players. Yeah, and yeah. how we value too. So mm-hmm. just a little insight. But as Cam said, let's move on to the goaltenders. Yeah. Um, the first one we want to start with is uh, Jake Allen. So he's an interesting character because he was completely awful. Driving the Bender bus. Yeah, he was... <laughs> he was our favorite they, Bender. <laughs> they probably kicked him off of the Bender bus because he was so bad. <laughs> they left him at home. Yeah, they left him at home. So, <laughs> But luckily... Uh, Coach Mike Yeo uh, came Yayo. and picked him up personally uh, in his own car and <laughs> kind of gave him the wheel. 
Um, as of recently, uh, Allen's been starting all of the games since uh, Coach Yeo's taken over. If you want the exact numbers, he started nine of their last 11 games under C- Coach Yeo, and he's won five out of those nine games, allowing 22 goals. So that's, you know, the 22 goals isn't the craziest, but uh, it's much better than what he was doing beforehand. So much better. Yeah, so it's it's nice seeing that uh, their coach has so much faith in him at this point to give him all those starts, even though Hutton has had two shutouts in both of his starts. Oh, wow. So... It's, you know, just having seen the confidence in Allen gives us confidence as fantasy owners to play him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, as of recently, he's uh, lost his last three games after winning four in a row. Yeah. So that kind of hurts a little bit. But as the uh, the Blues are fighting for a playoff position and are currently in one, they're going to keep on playing Allen uh, to maintain that uh, position. So I think that, uh, you know... It's it's he's going to still be good. He'll have his value, but he's not going to be any elite goaltender. Uh, he's no longer the bottom of the pack. He's definitely a middle tier goalie. So, what do you think about the Shattenkirk trade affecting him? Um, so, I I mean, losing one of your top defensemen is always going to hurt. But I honestly saw Shattenkirk as more of an offensive defenseman. I was going to say than I think a defensive defenseman. His value yeah. a little bit. So I don't see you know Allen's value dipping at all. Um, because of that, just more of the team's value in general. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the way I would say with Allen in terms of keep trade cut, uh, you would no longer cut him. He was definitely cuttable earlier, but I wouldn't do that now. Uh, I would love to trade him if I could get good value for him, but I don't see his value as, I mean, it's higher than it was before, which was dirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now he's more of a, some shiny dirt. Yes. So you're not going to get much <laughs> for that shiny dirt. So I would say he is a keep at this moment. Yeah. If I ever find shiny dirt, I'm going to keep it for sure. I'm like, <laughs> yep. I'm shiny dirt. dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not every day you find shiny dirt. Um, now, uh, if you guys don't mind me butting in really quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was in my, you know, uh, attempt to get myself a number one defenseman, and I, you know, we mentioned I got PK Subban. I was also toying with the idea of getting a third goaltender because I only have two, but I do have Martin Jones and Mike Smith, so two guys that get a lot of starts. I know Mike Smith is not the greatest as far as stats go because he's on the Coyotes, but I just wanted those shots and the starts. Mm -hmm. So if, let's say you have Allen and you know someone's looking for a trade, Allen might be able to boost what you're offering just enough to get something better in return. So if someone had offered me Allen, for instance, as a third goalie, I may have had to give up something a little better uh, as part of that PK Subban trade. So keep in mind that you can always do joint trades uh, with someone who is in the middle of a pack, kind of like Allen is. Yeah, that's actually a great way to put it. Um, he's definitely a packaged player. Um, he's someone where you would look for maybe like a two-for-one, where you would give Allen and a, a good forward or a good defenseman for an elite uh, goalie. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a move like that. Um, but in terms of straight across value, I don't think you can get as much as him as what he's really worth if you were to just keep him. Right. Agreed. But, uh, yeah, those good points. So that's all we have to say about Mr. Allen. Uh, he's a good keep at this point, but uh, we'll just leave it at, at that. So the next goalie that we want to move into is uh, Mr. Ben Bishop. So as you all know, uh, he's been recently traded to the Los Angeles Kings. Mm -hmm. So that kind of alters his value uh, compared to how it was at the beginning of the season. And during the season, it's very different now. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So it's kind of tough dealing with Ben Bishop, especially now that he's a backup goalie. Uh, Valuing him is going to be a a little different because it's kind of a 1A, 1B in Los Angeles right now. But... With Quick being the all-star goalie that he is, he's definitely going to be like the one A plus. <laughs> um, he's going to get more of the starts, and because they trust him more, they've seen it, and he's proven it. So that brings up the question: What are we going to do with Ben Bishop? So I could give you some of the stats of this season and the last month and how he's been playing, but honestly, none of that really matters once you get traded to a new team. Mm-hmm. It's a new system, you know. Uh, you got different players playing in front of you, different coaching. So we're just going to kind of give you uh, our feelings on him without being backed up by the stats because the stats might not be as reliable. 
So let's say keep trade cut. Are you going to cut him? I mean, you paid such a high price for him. Uh, whether you drafted him or traded him, I don't see cutting him as a good idea. Uh, so can you trade him? Uh, you know, his value in terms of at the beginning of the season when you r wasted a, you know, a one or maybe a top three, top four p or round pick on him. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that back. Uh, his trade value has dropped way low since uh, the actual trade that happened. So, well, you know, um, the only thing that I would recommend is sending trade offers to the quick owner because he's the backup. And he's a really good backup, so if you're stuck with him, that's fine. Don't drop him. He's going to get a start here and there, and he's going to be really good because he's an elite goaltender. But start sending trades out, and bundled trades, of course. You're not going to get a one-for-one one, probably. Well, you might for a quick owner, but that's all you can really do at this point. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, he's not worth much to any other team um, except you know, L.A. and the quick owner, so... You're either stuck keeping him or you're training him to to that yeah, to that quick owner. So I don't think there's now, much more oh, what were you yeah. saying, uh, I, sorry, I was just gonna say I totally agree with both of you hundred percent. Um just wanted to throw out a uh, little stats so everybody can hear the amount of games that the Kings will be playing during our playoffs. So mm -hmm. the first week the Kings will be playing four games, second week they'll playing three, and then third week they're playing four again. So that's a good amount of games. Do I anticipate quick to play all of them? Absolutely not. So if you want to hold on to him to get some starts, that's not a bad idea. Also keep in mind that the Kings did get Bishop on the slight chance that quick does re-injure himself. So you may want to wait another week and a half before you really make a decision if you're going to drop him. Uh, if you would, I, I obviously we don't think you should. Uh, but I think he will get some starts, especially in the playoffs. And if Quick goes down, he's their number one, and he'll be doing everything. So <laughs> very there, is true. That, there is that chance. Yeah, it's very, very true. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, I think that pretty much wraps up all we need to say on Bishop. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'll move right into mine then. We got Tomas Grice, 72% uh, oh, right. owned. I know. We're all familiar with him. He was a backup in, in San Jose for a little while. Um He's actually always played backup up until this season, which he's been doing pretty well. He's got a goals against average of 2.49, save percentage of 919. Uh, he's been holding it down for the most part as the Islanders push for playoffs um, on the leadership of Doug Waite and the talent and skill of Johnny T, of course. Uh, the big question everyone is asking is, is he good enough to carry the Islanders to the playoffs? Uh, currently, the Islanders are one point behind the Leafs for the last wild card spot, and Florida's two points behind them. Uh, actually, that might be a little different now. I haven't updated that stat for a couple days, but um, that's how they're very close in contention for that wild card spot. Uh, statistically, the Islanders have a 38.8% chance of making playoffs, especially because they have one of the softer schedules down the stretch, so that's really nice for them. Um, as for Grice, he has been uh, great with a quality save percentage of 629, which is basically quality starts is the number of starts that he has that are above average for every goaltender in the league or compared to every goaltender in the league. And, what, and if it's above uh, 0.600, then he's doing excellent. If it's above uh, 500, then he's pretty good. And if it's below that, then he's doing really terribly. So hearing him have a 6.29, that's really, really good. Um, but it might be a little unsustainable because it's so high. The breakdown of his save percentage might surprise you, though. He has a high danger save percentage of 8.53. Medium is 8.98. And a high of 9.63. That's very good. Those numbers outshine tenders such as Jake Allen, Corey Schneider, Martin Jones, Frederick Anderson, no! Pekka Rene, and <laughs> Carey Price. So the problem with this is consistency. Grice has never been a number one starting goaltender, and the pressure and fatigue will eventually catch up to him, in my opinion. Uh, his great numbers are primarily due to his amazing start after taking the job from Halak, but recently he's been either spot on or seriously off. His past 10 games, he's had four starts above a 900. Um, in fact, they were well over a 9-2-0, which is crazy, but... Um, in the starts where he did bad, he had below an 8.70. 
and one time he hit a save percentage of 7.90. Um, Grice needs to show a little more consistency before being completely relied on as a surefire starter. Uh, if you've been riding the train this long, I'd say it's time to get off at your station and sell very high on Grice right now. Hmm. Regardless of his good schedule coming up, I just think you, if you can get a good um, elite goaltender for the numbers he's been putting up and how he's been looking, um, I say do it. If not, Islanders are going to push for playoffs. They're going to do it on the back of Grice and Johnny T. So he's not the worst to have on your roster, of course, but I just I fear for him going down the stretch. Um, but yeah, going back to those, what do you guys think? Like, were you surprised about those save percentages? Um, like when I say high danger, medium or low danger, medium and high danger, what I mean is, uh, the distances from the net that people are shooting and scoring on. So typically low danger is from far out or sorry. Um, yeah, low danger is from far out. So it's going to be a higher save percentage. And um, he has a 9.63, which is outshining the names that I said previously. Martin Jones and Carey Price were a big surprise to me. Um, his medium is from probably near the slot, shooting in. And uh, high danger is from inside the slot, around the crease. And those are tough to save. Those are usually the goaltender's reaction times. But, you know, impressive numbers, not to say the least. Um, what do you guys think, though? Absolutely. No, that's crazy. I actually didn't even know what classified each of those zones. So thank you for explaining that. Mm. Uh, but it's really cool to see that he has a medium danger zone safe percentage of almost 900. Yeah, like that's 0. very 8, good. Nine eight. That's really good. Cause you think about where that, if that is, that's right in the middle, you know, of your zone, you're, a lot of shots, especially a lot of power plays uh, are, are, are getting one timers from there. Uh, you know, Wayne Simmons says that a lot. Uh, Drew, I don't know why I just mentioned two Philadelphia players, but people like that, you know, do a lot of one timers from the slot. So it's cool to see uh, Grice, who used to be a shark, have such a high uh, save percentage. Yeah, he's been doing really well. So it's been nice. Um, I don't know how high you can get his value, but here, let me give you a couple of names. Um, Would you trade him for a John Gibson? Yes. What about hands down? What about a Henrik Lundqvist? Uh, Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, what about a Roberto Luongo? No. Well, actually, oh man, that's a tough one. Just because it depends if you if you have Reimer or not. I guess in that situation, right? It depends. Yeah. yeah. If you have a starting goaltender, then maybe Luongo because he's just been tenured so long and he's very seasoned. He's very reliable. He's got great numbers. Recently, he's been slumping. Um, Grice is for sure going to be the starter, so that's really cool if you can you can get the starts from him, which is nice. Whereas Longo, like you said, was splitting time with Reimer right now. They're trying to find who's going to get the hot hand down the stretch. But I think the Florida Panthers have a good chance of making playoffs too. Um, the Islanders are a couple points ahead of them, like I said, so it's it's a tight race for sure. We don't I don't know who's going to make it. Um, I like both teams, so it's tough. I like the Islanders a little more. Um, but I just, Grice scares me because I don't know. He's never had the number one position, so it's hard to he judge. He played great in the playoffs last year, though. So. Oh, he played excellent, yeah. Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, I, I, I honestly, I'd stick with Grice, to be honest. I think my answer is I would stay with him. Okay. He okay. has definitely been put into a stressful situation. He was not expected to be the starter this year, uh, and he's done a stupendous job. And like you both said, they're making a push for the playoffs. He is more motivated than ever to get back and win yet another playoff series for them. So uh, I'm going to stick with Grace. All right. Mm. Unless I get like Jonathan Quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Well, I think uh, that that should do it on Grace right there, and we should move on to our last goaltender mm-hmm. that we have. Um, and the last goalie we have, oh, man, he had a, a tough start. That's uh, Corey Schneider. Um, yeah, this, this guy has not been having the season we were expecting, uh, an awful start to the season and he's kind of rebounding, but not even that much. I mean, it, a lot of it had to do with the devils and the health of their team, but either way, just the numbers aren't as great as we wanted them, uh, on the season. He only has 19 wins, uh, 2.67 goal against average and a 0.913 save percentage. 
Those are by far uh, career lows for him in all those categories. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, the last month, he's kind of picked it up with five wins. He got a little better with the 2.54 goal against average. Save percentage is back up to that 0.923 save percentage, but still those aren't the most amazing stats from Corey Schneider. But I would say the real value that he has is his dominance of the New Jersey crease. And when I say that, I'm letting you know that he started 48 of their 62 games. Uh. So it's just kind of showing that it's his crease. They ride him as much as they can. Uh, he's, you know, top five in goalie starts this season, tied with a couple of guys. Um, so he'll get you the starts if you need, you know, the plays during the week. But uh, you're not always going to get the, the goalie categories you want. Um, but I, I guess we can look at him in a little brighter side right now. Um, within his last 11 games, nine of those games, he's had above a point nine hundred save percentage. So that's better. That's, okay. um, that's more like the Schneider that we know. And uh, even just over his whole career, um, he's never had a full entire season with the save percentage under .921. So that's really you know his bread and butter right there. That's what you want or you, you drafted Schneider for was his save percentage. That point nine two, like not many other goalies have a, you know, a career um, save percentage of a bo- above that. So that's why you have him. He doesn't really produce that right now. So we're kind of stuck trying to decide what we're going to do with Schneider at this moment. So my recommendation, which will be kind of tough to do, is to trade him. Um, I can't really tell you who you would trade him for because there's not many other names. Maybe Jake Allen if if that's the one we we would mention before. But the main reason why you want to get rid of him, and I would avoid saying keep him, is his playoffs schedule is not too promising. Uh, in his championship games, sim- similar to the Winnipeg Jets, the Devils only have two games during the championship week. So that's kind of a bummer. That, and who even wants, you know, Schneider playing those two games when he's as yeah. poor as he's been playing, so... I would try to package him with another player and try to get a better goaltender from yeah. someone. I what mean, you... yeah, he's been playing a lot better as of late. Like, he has a bunch of saves uh, percentages above 900, um, except for the last game. But, yeah, I totally agree. you got to sell him. Yep, you I, uh, I think that, just my last thing, I think you need to sell him for Pecorine. I think that his stats in the past 10 games will boost his value, and I think Pecorine has gone down in the past 20 games. I think that Pecorine is a much better choice because in that last week of playoffs, instead of two games, they play five. So I think if you can get Pecorine, I would trade him one for one, no questions right now. Uh, yeah, I highly doubt that'll happen. But yeah. I would even do a two for one for if, Pecorine. If, yeah, if you can, if you can oh, get I mean, Pecorine I, I for too, any sort I'm of trade, get the offer, I would absolutely. I would do it. Oh, that's a good. I would, I would have down. done it. Yes, I would have done it 20, 20, 20, 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, that's going to wrap up our podcast for today. We went through a lot of names, boys. We did. Thanks for uh, going through those with us. And girls. This is a anyone can play sports. Anyone. Even dog and kitty cat. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.